Hello and welcome to Croft for two days of live broadcast. We've got a lot of racing coming your way here on what is an absolutely stunning day. Good track temperature, nice cool air going through the engine as well, so it should produce some pretty exciting uh, racing, as always, when it comes to the BRSCC. Now, as you can see in the garage, just gone past Lewis Kent there. He is in the TCR UK car in the Hyundai i30N. Very, very fast car. Keep your eyes out for him. Good to see Darrell Wilson here as well, racing in the TCR. But right now, We've got a lot of other things happening before we get to qualifying for TCR and the Touring Car Trophy. Let me give you a rundown. Starting off with the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. That race is happening in the next 10 minutes or so. It's going to get very noisy out here in the pits. Then we go to TCR UK and the Dunlop Touring Car Trophy Qualifier. Then we move on to the Avon Tires National Formula 4 Championships. Always very exciting from the open wheel cars just there. Volkswagen Racing Cup coming up after that, then the BRSCC Alfa Romeo Championship linking up with the Toyo Tires Porsche Championship, then Nankang Tires once again, BMW Compact Cup, Mazda MX-5, the Super Cup, very exciting form of racing there too from the open top cars, and then the Disloc Civic Cup. But to find out more about the race we're having in just a few moments than BMW Compact Cup, I've got Dan Collett here. So tell us all about the championship. Where did it all come from? Where did it all start? Yeah, about, uh, what are we on now, 2019, I think? So, yeah, 2011, um, a chap called Paul McCurlin sat down, decided he wanted to return to motorsport after a, a few years out from from racing. Um, nothing really fitted the bill on the, the calendars that he could see around budget and time and everything else. So the Compact Cup was born out of his want to go racing again. Um, and I'm the guy he sucked it in to come and help out. And, yeah, I've stuck with it ever since. So, yeah, this will be 10th yeah, season, something like that, running around the paddock. Now, on the lead-up just then, I mentioned it is a really exciting form of race in the Compact Cup because the grids are massive. Yeah, we've got 33 this weekend, which is actually a bit low for us as, as things go. But, yeah, generally around a 40-car grid, it's absolutely massive. And it doesn't matter on, on ability or skill or budget. It doesn't matter where you are on the grid. There's somebody to race, and that's, that's what part of what makes us so attractive on the... It's really nice to have this size of grid because if you get too large, you then do split grids and it becomes a bit of a headache, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So on those circuits where we go to, you know, brands, there's quite a, a small limit. We end up splitting the grid and, you know, we've always said we put this on, you will race. So obviously then we start in split grids, A, B, C, A versus B, blah, 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 blah. But, you know, we make it race, we make it work and we make it happen. Now, it's accessible. So tell us a bit about costs and if anyone's interested in finding out more how deep are their pockets and how long are their arms going to need to be? Well, it's like everything with motorsport. You can spend as little as you can get away with or as much as you as you want. You know, um, a, a pre-built race-ready car is about sort of around the 5K mark. Um, you can put one together for probably about that, a little bit less maybe, if you know how to weld and, and the other bits and pieces. And then your championship winning cars, you know, they, they go for a bit more money, shall we say. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we, we see drivers that come back to this championship year on year on year. So it's a championship that once the drivers are in it, they like to stay in it. Yeah, it's challenging. There's, all, you know, there's, a, there's a good bunch of guys at the front there. You, know, they, you get a bit of rotation in and out with the grid and drivers, but there's always that challenge at the front. The cars are not easy to drive. They're not difficult to drive, but they're challenging, and it, it really rewards a driver. You know, we've always had this ethos with the formula about um, ability over checkbook. Um, and that always shines through at, at any point in the grid. So that's, that's what keeps everyone coming back. It's the challenge and the, the level playing field that we create in the regulations as well. So those new to the BMW Compact Cup, what should we expect to see out here? It's quite a windy day, but it is a beautifully hot day. And I know the track's fairly green. So what are we going to see? Um, hopefully a good, clean 15-minute race full of action. That's, that's what we aim for. That's what we want to put on. Um, like you say, it's, we've not been here since 2015 as a formula. So it's a bit of a, a find your way around for the guys. You know, Stephen Daly, he's qualified fifth, which is, which is low for Stephen. Even he was surprised about that because he felt the lap was a really good one. So the track's going to improve. Over the, over the course of the two races that we've got on today and I, I'd expect to see him going forward and a few others as well. Yeah, I was surprised to see him not on the front row. Yeah, so was he. So were we. I mean, yeah, Steve, you know, Stephen's a quick lad. You know, that's not to take away from the guys. You know, Ian put it on pole with an absolutely phenomenal lap. Matt Parks was only just behind him. So, you know, it's not like Stephen's dropped down right down into 20th. He's, he's up in fifth. But, you know, that, that front, that sharp end is competitive and it always is. You've got to be on your game every lap. Now, two races today, so that's quite a lot for these drivers to have to focus on. Uh, yeah, we do two races on a day every, every, you know, all of our meetings. We've got a couple of meetings this season, Snetterton, which we've already done, Anglesey, which is our next one, where we've got three races on a weekend um, with a sort of random draw top eight grid as well. That's been really popular, and that really mixed things up a little bit. Uh, for some of them at Snetterton, Stephen managed to pull pole 
which we're really not sure how, but he managed it anyway. Um, so yeah, so yeah, two two races on a day is, is quite normal for our guys. They're quite used to it. So yeah, it's it's not. I don't want to say it's not a challenge for them. It's motorsport. It's always a challenge. But yeah, in that regard, they're used to it, shall we say. Well, you mentioned Anglesey, and that's a very different circuit here. There's no Snowdonia over the top here. It's all quite open and flat where we are right now. Yeah, it's not quite as pretty. You can't see the Irish Sea um, and things like that. You know, there's, there's uh, yeah, always that risk at Anglesey. But Anglesey has its own weather climate. It's a unique circuit. I've raced there a lot. It's a circuit I absolutely adore. So I'm really looking forward to taking the compacts there. I mean, again, we've not been there since 2012, I think 2013. So again, as a formula, we've not been there for a long time time i think it will really mix the grid up again a bit like this has it's it's one you've got to really get on top of that's the thing it's nice to have a variety of circuits on the race calendar so finally if anybody wants to find out about the championships so they want to get in touch with you and they want to maybe enter for next year how do they go about it yeah two two well three sources of, of information really which is the bmw race days website there's also the brscc website so you can pop onto there and and go and get up all the info you need to go racing and also the facebook page that we have up and running it's very active we put a lot of information on there cars that are for sale anyone looking for drives you know there's a lot of information out there you've just got to find it on those three sources really there you go it's all there thank you very much there dan so if you want to find out more you've just heard how easiest way is just to go onto any well-known search engine and put nankang tires bmw compact cup in and you'll find it without a doubt it's time for the race or for the build-up anyway so let's head over to our race commentator scott woodwiss Thank you very much, Bryn, and good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to As Bryn has alluded, a very sunny and bright Croft circuit in North Yorkshire for this TCR UK race weekend. Plenty of action coming here if you like tin tops, production car racing, single seaters, sports cars, and everything else in between. It should be a fantastic two days worth of racing. And as we've just alluded to, we are getting set for the first race of the weekend and of the day, and that is for race one of two for the Nankang Tyres BMW Compact Cup. Now, these cars are basically the compact version of the E36 318 Ti. Uh, they all have a 1.9 litre engine, and most of these cars are self-built. There aren't that many teams or outfits that build cars together, but they do have a lot of customers, uh, sort of independent drivers that go ahead and put these cars together. So that's why it's such a cost-effective. You can pick a car up for anywhere between five to nine thousand pounds as we've just alluded to through the course of it um of course we are live here courtesy of the british racing and sports car club and alpha live we're live on both facebook and on youtube so if you are watching already in the live stream hello to everyone wherever you may be watching around the world if you do have any comments uh, we do have a live feed of comments both from youtube and facebook so do be sure to get your comments in the course and let us know that you're watching and where you're watching from and what you think of the action i can give an early shout out to the following uh dave goddard as in dave commentator i'm sure hello to him good friend of mine uh, Matthew Granger Snoopy Dog David Whitehouse Lucy Payne's also watching as well uh, Mam Cork I think as well and Peter O'Connor hello to everyone who's watching already so far as you can see a little bit of cloud in the air the temperature here this weekend is round about 17 18 degrees beautiful sunny day here at Croft in North Yorkshire nice a few crowds few people in the grandstands waiting for this action to get underway you can see just in the middle of the shot, the uh, Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup car just peeking out of the assembly area, waiting to get out on track. As we mentioned, we have a 33-car grid here this weekend. I think Dan was being a little bit modest when he said that's quite small by their standards. But then again, he wasn't so much joking because they do regularly get grids uh, within sort of the uh, late 30s to early to mid 40s. It really is a fantastically supported championship and a really cost-effective way to get into racing. Uh, one driver that has been successful in this championship is a former British GT champion, James. James Gornall, uh, who has won this championship at least once, and he's currently racing in Mini Challenge, but he has competed before uh, since, obviously, racing British GT. He, after a bit of a layoff, he decided to come back into racing, found the Compact Cup, and he had some great season-long battles with the man right in the middle of shot there, which is championship leader Stephen Daly. So, as you can see, the green flag is flying at the assembly air, which means that it is number 59, Ian Jones, who will lead the cars out onto the circuit, 33 strong in the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup, and they'll head towards the grid. Now Ian Jones has had he runs fifth in the championship so far. What we'll do is we'll give you a quick rundown before we do the grid of who comes where in the championship coming this weekend. Uh, Stephen Daly, who's the double defending champion and also a former Scottish BMW Compact Cup champion, who is there on screen, number 64. He comes into the weekend with 343 points. That's a 23-point lead over second place man in the points, Tom Griffiths. Mark Skeet, who is also the top driver in the Masters competition. That's for drivers 45 and over. Is Ian Jones almost puts it onto the grass, going round to the grid the assembly area, don't throw it off just yet Ian, uh, is in third place Mark Skeet. Mikey, Do Mikey Doble's having a great season so far, in fourth place in the points so far. Ian Jones who starts on pole for this first race is fifth. 
with 271. Then Wayne Flint in sixth with 260. Ben Huntley with, with 256 in seventh place. Matthew Parks, who was up in the top three last season, is down in uh, eighth position after he uh, has had a bit of a, an up and down season. He's been in and around the top five and top ten placings. Had a bit of a, a tough time in the first race at Snetterton, which dropped him down the order and saw him only score one point. But he's got some work to do to try and get back up toward closer towards the front runners. And then Keith Towers in ninth place in points with 245 and then Gordon McMillan in 10th place with 232. So the circuit, of course, this weekend, Croft in North Yorkshire. Very flat, but very fast. The layout, of course, is the 2.1-mile full-length circuit. They're at the current section here, which is called, I run it quite efficiently for this weekend, Sunny In and Sunny Out. So this is the first corner, Sunny In, short straight, and then Sunny Out back towards the complex. It's a short straight, and it's a run up towards this very tight complex that takes them back towards the pits. It is a fantastic circuit where there's lots of overtaking opportunities. You usually get great racing here at Croft. And also one thing to point out, racing should be faster than it has been in the past because this circuit was resurfaced at the beginning of the season before racing took place, so that time should be faster than ever. So as the cars head around up to the grid, I'm pretty sure that they will get uh, one uh, formation lap before they head off. Uh, for 15 minutes of action here this afternoon. Looking at the results so far, I mean, Stephen Daly, of course, qualifying back down in fifth position. I did see somewhere that suggested that he may have had potentially a little bit of an oil leak, but uh, looks if that's the case, they seem to have fixed it pretty promptly, and away he goes, starting from row three. Uh, a good also qualifying uh, qualif performance from Oliver Fowler, who starts in fourth on the grid, and he is looking where he is in the points, outside the top ten. Oliver Fowler actually sits at the moment, if I scroll down, in 26th position. He has missed a couple of rounds, but he's been up there in and around the top ten in the rounds he has done, so it's good to see that Oliver's made some great progress since his last appearance. And, uh, of course, they've been so far this year to Brands Hatch at the start of the season in March. They've been to Alton Park in April. They had three great races last time, out in June at uh, Stetterton. Of course, they appear here at Croft here at the beginning of July. They'll head off to Anglesey for three more races before they then jet off to Silverstone and then Donington at the end of the season. It's always fast and furious in the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. There's 55 Wayne Flint, and he should be starting this, this weekend or this race from sixth on the grid. That's also Paul Maguire. He's a former Mazda MX-5 racer and champion of the past. He switched rear-wheel drive uh, from a rear-wheel drive Mazda to a rear-wheel drive BMW. And there's Gordon McMillan, his son Rudy also on the grid this weekend in a bit of a father-son effort. And also the same thing with Mike and Mikey Doble. Mikey is the junior, Mike is the senior. There's the triple six of Reese Clayton. He runs in the same team as double defending champion Stephen Daly. And there's number three, Matt Flowers, on the grid as well for 15th place. And running down the grid, it's great to see such a colourful and well-turned-out grid. One of the part points of the regulations is that these cars have to be presented as best as possible, because if not, you do have the potential of not even being allowed onto the grid. So all these teams know they have to keep these cars looking as immaculate as possible. And it really does show these guys put a lot of effort and a lot of time to maintain these cars as best as possible. There's car number 35 on the grid. That is John King. And looking further back down the grid, it's a mammoth entry. We said 33 cars all set to get underway. A uh, quick shout out to Ben Story. He says, thank you to Alpha Life for the coverage today. Couldn't make it and my daughter was gutted. Currently sat in the house watching. I think the second part of that comment's been cut off, sadly. But so uh, good to see you guys watching. Like I said, if you are watching at either uh, on Facebook and YouTube, please do get your comments in because, of course, we can certainly let you know exactly what's happening. Uh, right, the cars are just about to head off onto their formation lap for this first race. As, as actually the start of the race, my apologies. I was thinking we are going to get the uh, formation. That way we go, and immediately we've got problems already. There's a car into the wall. That looks like possibly, is that number three of Flowers? I think it, no, it's number four, and that is a Ray McDowell. He started off 11th place, so my apologies. That was a, a, a formation up out of the set assembly area, which uh, is a little bit sort of unorthodox. But anyway, back to the start of the race. It's a clean start for the front two, and immediately Ian Jones gets a good start through the S's onto the back straight for the first time. So Ian Jones leads the way at the start. It is going to be Matthew Parks in second place and trying to get up there as well. In third position is Oliver Fowler already. A great cracking start past Ben Huntley in the 96 as they charge down the back straight towards Tower Corner for the first time. So 50 minutes of racing. Big lock up on the inside front in corner four. Ian Jones as they turn into the right-hander. There's Gordon McMillan chasing after the purple-orange car of David Sharp. And it was a good start from Gordon McMillan. Those two start on the fifth row together. So into the Jim Clark S is very fast. Left-right sequence as they turn their way up towards the 
Right-hander at the top of the circuit at Barcroft. Very fast right-handed kink. And then it's a sunny in and sunny out. And already now Matthew Parks has slipped through into the lead past 59 Ian Jones. As for championship leader Stephen Daly in the white and orange car, a little out of shape into sunny in. But he's down to seventh place already. So as they head out of sunny in and sunny out, he's got some work to do to try and get himself back up the order. Out through sunny in and sunny out. Down towards it. Looking back up the inside again. Under threat for the lead is Matthew Parks. They turn in. This complex is a, a very switchback and lots of work here. Look, diving up the inside for third place goes Ben Huntley. Looking for second place on Ian Jones. They head into the hair. Putting back up the inside for third goes Oliver Fowler. He may have a rookie plate, but he's not scared to get up the inside. He makes a little bit of contact with the 96. Pushes him wide. This might allow possibly the man in fifth place behind him to get through. That might be Wayne Flint in the 655. But across the line for the first time they go. And it is Matthew Parks that leads the way. Second place for Ian Jones. Third for Oliver Fowler. Fourth for Wayne Flint now. Ben Huntley's down to fifth after the contact. Paul Maguire's up to sixth. And championship leader Stephen Daly down to seventh off the start. Not a great start for the championship leader, but with some work to do on lap two here. The rest of the top ten completed by the 16 of Tom Griffiths. Then it's going to be the 40 of Sharp and the 10 of Rudy of Gordon McMillan. Bouncing over the curbs, there was Ben Huntley, I think, trying to make up fourth position again from Wayne Flint. As they clip the tyre stacks, one car running very wide on the exit there was car number 93. That was David May. He's one of the top line Masters drivers, the Masters champion last year. And looking to try and make some places now. Up the inside of Tom Griffiths goes Stephen Daly. That's now for, uh, again, defending for seventh position. So I'm not sure what the issue is, but Stephen Daly really not making that many positions up through the order. He's lost a spot from where he started. He qualified back in, or in fifth position, down to seventh. So some work to do to get back up with the front runners. Second lap then, into Barcroft once again. Matthew Parks glides the number 38 machine into the right hand at the first part of Sunny Inn. Ian Jones, ever an attacking driver. He always leaves it all out on the track every single time he races. And he's definitely not letting Matthew Parks have any moment to rest. Cracking effort so far from Oliver Faller in third place. And that's a mistake for Aaron Morgan. An especially adapted car. Someone else sideways. That's the 45. That is the 45 of Brendan Murphy sideways on the track. So someone out of control whether there's something down on the circuit or not I'm not sure but uh, it's out of our shot for the time being but everyone appears to have missed him as we head back into the hairpin Wayne Flint having to defend the inside line there from Ben Huntley in the 96 they turn out of the hairpin to end lap two a little sideways there for Paul Maguire as they head onto the pit straight and he will come under pressure from the 64 Stephen Daly fastest lap of the race goes to Oliver Fowler 141.951 as they head into Clairvaux at the start of lap three so Matthew Parks in the dark green car, the number 38, followed by Ian Jones in the black car with the pink trim, number 59. Then in third place there is the black and fluorescent yellow, number 18, with the rookie cross. That means he's done less than six races in his racing career, but all the fella certainly driving like he's done it for years. As they come onto the back straight, as the S's, and that's sideways, that's Stephen Daly. Stephen Daly, the championship leader, sideways onto the grass. Big drama for the 64. Now then, was there contact? Did he get tagged by somebody? It happened in the background, but Stephen Day's car is stranded on the side of the track. Out of the car he gets, he appears to be all right, but absolutely gutted. There is damage to the left front, and that is dramatic for the championship because it will mean that it'll have to be one of his drop scores. He hasn't DNF'd in a race all season. That's his first DNF of the year, and that could possibly have a dramatic effect come the end of the championship. Well, we said it was a dramatic start for Stephen Day and a poor one at that. And it's just gone from bad to worse for the Scotsman. The championship leader in trouble and out of the race on lap three here at Croft in this first race for the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. He will have to get that car repaired and back out for race two. The leaders into the complex for the third time. Still Matthew Parks has the lead from Ian Jones in second place. They wind their way through. But that means now that the likes of Tom Griffiths and Mark Skeets, who are a little bit further down the order, look at where they are on the order. Where Mark Skeets is down in 11th place. And as for Tom Griffiths, he's only back down in 8th position. So that might be a bit of a blessing in disguise, possibly being further down the order than they would like to be to take advantage. Mikey Doble as well appears to be outside of the top. He's in 8th, 13th position. As Wayne Flint sets the fastest lap of the race. And Wayne Flint is down in fourth position. He's starting to close up onto the back of these threes. Ian Jones gets very ragged over the curbs on the inside of Clairvaux through Hawthorne's, the long arcing right-hander, and then the quick flick left. And it was here that Stephen Day lost it. And whether or not he got clipped by another car, the tyre stack is slightly in the middle of the road. So I wonder possibly if it was a tyre stack that got clipped, because you can see on the right-hand side, it is running almost in the middle of the track there, and the cars are having to try and move around it as they head up towards Tower Bend. Trying to defend the inside line for third place, Oliver Fowler, as he comes under threat from Wayne Flint. 
And now onto the back of them comes Ben Huntley in the 96. They turn out of Tower Corner. So it's five for the lead as they head up towards the Jim Clark S's. And as we say, fastest lap of the race lies with Wayne Flint. He's on a 1 minute 41.800. Ian Jones just closes in now up towards Barcroft, looking this way and that, but he can't seem to find a way through. Can he try and prise the door open? Takes the wider line as Parks has to defend on the inside. Jones will look for the cutback. He's all over the grass. They turn through the first part of Sunny in and out again. So there they go, five of them all together. Then it's Paul Maguire trying to break away in sixth position. Tom Griffiths is back in seventh, and safety car has been deployed. And I wonder possibly is that for another incident or is that for the errant tyre stack on the exit of the S's? Well, everyone's stacking up. You race until you see this, the safety car uh, boards and flags. Wayne Flint giving Oliver Fallow a bit of a friendly nudge in the bumper. But it seems as though they're all starting to slow up now as they head around the hairpin. And that has to be to recover Stephen Daly's stranded compact cup car on the inside. And there is Stephen Daly. And look at that. The picture says it all. Absolutely gutted. As we say, that is, it's a rare DNF. It is rare that Stephen Daly makes a mistake, and he's been up as a front runner all the way through. Now, hopefully, he's okay. The ambulance will be down there purely as a precaution. Anytime there's an incident, the drivers will always go to the medical centre to be checked over by the chief medical officer purely as a precaution. So I'm sure that he'll go to visit uh, Dr. Sarah Robertshaw, who is the chief medical officer for this weekend's meeting. So the safety car picks the field up. We're halfway through now in this. BMW Compact Cup race and a chance for the likes of Matt Parks and Ian Jones to gain some valuable points on Champion League Stephen Daly. You can see the debris on the middle of a track that's laying there and I suspect possibly it's damage on the left front. Looks to me as if Stephen Daly has clipped the inside tyre stack just trying to make up a couple more positions. Whether or not he was side by side with anyone, it was out of camera shot but we saw the car sideways on the left hand side. I suspect possibly it's either a mistake or contact with somebody else. And if it's the case, either way, it is rare that we see strife for Stephen Daly. So as he laments what could have been, let's take stock of where we are then with seven and a half minutes gone. Matthew Parks leads the way with Ian Jones in second place. Oliver Fowler runs in third, followed by Wayne Flint in fourth position. Ben Huntley sits in fifth. There's Mark Skeets with a bit of bodywork hanging off. Uh, sixth position for Paul Maguire. Seventh place for Tom Griffiths. Eighth for the number 40 of David Sharp. Ninth place for uh, Rudy, uh, Gordon McMillan. And then there is Mark Skeets, the Irishman, the leading Masters driver this this week at this season so far in 10th position. Rest of the field downwards. He's just ahead of 11th place man, uh, which is David May. And he's the defending Masters champion, so plenty of competition going on there. 12th place for Mikey Doble, 13th place for Keith Towers, 14th place for Mike Doble, or Doble Senior, 15th place for Matt Flowers, 16th place for the 666 of Reese Claydon. Then it's uh, Rudy McMillan, the 35 of John King, the number 7 of Aaron Morgan, and the number 4 of McDowell rounds out the top 20. Aaron Morgan's car, actually, we saw him a little bit uh, wayward up at the complex of Sunny In and Sunny Out. Um, he actually runs with a specially adapted car with hand controls, and to be up in the top 20 is absolutely brilliant, so good to see he's ever improving. So, of course, it's a relatively still hot day here. The track temperature is pretty high, of course. It'll be significantly higher than the ambient temperature. It's also quite humid here this weekend as well. There are a few clouds around, but they are starting to dissipate as the weekend goes. And uh, the, the weather's supposed to stay with us here for both days, so it should be fantastic to see. So, cars just bunching up here as they come up towards the hairpin. And, yeah, uh, the safety car doesn't appear to have pulled. In fact, he may have done. The safety car looks to have pulled in. So, a very quick recovery of Stephen Daly's car. Matthew Parks decides to get the race underway, but on the restart has been caught napping possibly by Ian Jones because he's managed to try and pull himself alongside on the sprint down towards Clairvaux. So racing once again here at Croft into the right hand at, at turn one, bouncing over the curbs. So Matthew Parks under pressure on the restart from Ian Jones for the lead. Also for third place, it's a battle between Oliver Fowler with Wayne Flint and also we've got in the mix as well Ben Huntley there in 96, the, the grey car with the silver and yellow flashes as they turn through the S's on the first time on the restart. And now Matthew Parks under threat because here comes Ian Jones in the 59, looking to the outside on the sprint down towards Tower Corner. It's a brave man to go down the outside to make a pass. But that, that try not telling Ian Jones that is up the inside for fourth. Look at that, squeezing his way through. Because Ben Huntley, a little bit of a hip and shoulder on the side of Wayne Flint. You might not appreciate that, but it was a it's typical tin top racing as you see in this kind of championship. Meanwhile, for the lead, side by side into the Jim Clark S's. That's a brave pass if he can pull that one off. Parks is wide on the runoff area, but he's through. So Ian Jones back into the lead after starting pole position. Squeeze his way through. Sideways on the exit of Barkoff. That is Paul Maguire. Out of control, the run to Sunny and Sunny out. 
That's a full pirouette that, like that, but he managed to get it stopped and there was a miracle, no one hit him. That was a great bit of precision driver to keep it off the road. That's him spinning out of sixth position. He'll try and find his way back through. Meanwhile, for second place, that's Oliver Fowler going down the outside of Matthew Parks. Looking to the, take second place, going up the inside into the first part of the complex. Matthew Parks is wide. Here comes Ben Huntley to try and get himself back through again. And they are side by side, but Parks got the racing line. He's got trap positions. They turn through the hairpin. Huntley tries to squeeze back up the side and says, I'll have my fourth place back if you don't mind. Little bit of a hip and shoulder. Wayne Flint might get himself into the mix here. And it is now side by side on the sprint back down towards Clairvaux. Wayne Flint in the 55 car, just peeking to take a look, almost making it three wide. Less than three and a half minutes to go, so we'll get a couple more laps of racing. Fowler has the inside line, almost leans on the door of Ben Huntley. Huntley tries to force the issue. They're still side by side through Hawthorns, but Fowler's got his nose in front. And I'm sure that Huntley will have to capitulate and let him have the, the line into the S's, which he does. And now fifth position now for Wayne Flint as they sprint down the straight towards Tower Corner again. And now that Ian Jones is in front of Matthew Parks, he's trying to pull that gap out as they head down the back straight. It is now up to what looks to be sixth position for Tom Griffith. Seventh now for David Sharp. Then McMillan, Skeets and May. That's the top ten as they turn in. There's the battle developing between Gordon McMillan in the silver and black car number ten and the all yellow car with the black bumpers. That's the Irishman Mark Skeets. Comes as the weekend third in the championship. And he's currently back at the moment. He's back around about almost 40 points. But with Stephen Daddy's DNF, it'll be counted as a drop score because you drop, I think it's your three worst scores in this championship. So it makes things a little, more, a little more tighter, a bit more sort of competitive, which means that if you have a bad result, you can simply drop that. But if you get anything like a disqualification, you cannot drop that result, which means that it makes then it, it, even more crucial. That's a damage for some 79. That's James Stanbury. A bit of a tete-a-tete -tete with somebody front end of that car certainly proving some battle scars after a bit of contact at tower bend so the leaders head into the complex that time is about 1 minute 45 i reckon if they're quick enough we might get possibly two more laps 1 minute 55 is the exit the hairpin so yeah i think we're going to get two more times around the 2.1 mile circuit here at croft Sprinting down the pit straight. This is the main fight for third then. So in third place, new fastest lap of the race goes to Matthew Parks. So he's not finished in the battle of the lead. Fowler, meanwhile, is not finished in getting out off to third place. Down the outside into Clairvaux to make the move on third place on Ben Huntley. They both clout the curves. So seconds out round two between these two. We saw them go side by side a lap ago. And Fowler wants to pick up his first podium as Wayne Flint smokes the inside rear wheel as they turn up through the S's now. They're on lap set on lap eight as they head onto the back straight. A little bit of a, a break there for uh, Wayne Flint. He was carrying quite a bit of momentum off the corner as they head down towards the end of the straight at Tower Bend. Fowler goes to the outside line. Huntley has to defend it. And now they head back into the right hander towards the back of the circuit. Top two using all the track and a little bit more as they sprint down towards the Jim Clark S's. Now, as we said, it's not normal to pass at Jim Clark S's, but you're a brave man if you can attempt it. Oliver Faller has got a great run here on the sprint down towards Barkoff. He might be starting to line him up for a move into Sunny Inn. He's right underneath the rear exhaust. And he's sideways. They're both sideways. Huntley and Faller lose it in sequence. Off the road they go. There was no contact. At least not visibly. But they're both off the road incredibly. Ben Huntley into the tyre barrier. Oliver Faller hasn't got any damage, but he carries on. So that's now opened up Wayne Flint into third place. What an extraordinary race this is. It's the first race of the weekend, and it's been action aplenty. Almost no one wants to finish in third place at this rate. Unbelievable. So this now means that it's still Ian Jones from Matthew Parks, but now up into third place is Wayne Flint. There is Ben Huntley's car. Very second-hand looking there front. And as they head out of the hairpin, the fight for third now becomes Wayne Flint versus Tom Griffiths. And this will help Tom because, of course, he's second in the championship. He will gain some points on Stephen Daly, and I'm pretty sure that when we come to the end of this race, he will, at least for the time being, take the championship lead with Stephen Day scoring no points. Tom Griffiths will get, I think, roughly around possibly around 45 points, I think, for fourth position. He can get a couple more if he can grab third place from Wayne Flint. But the timer has hit zero, so one more time around the Croft circuit. But extraordinarily, all the front runners seem to be dropping off by the way. So we've lost Stephen Daly, we've lost Oliver Fowler, we've lost Ben Huntley. And now as we head on to the final lap of the race, is there time for any more to hit Strife? We certainly hope not, but the rest of the field go pouring down towards the right-hander at Tower Corner at the end of the straight. And there is a battle still going on. This has now turned into a battle between McMillan and Skeets for sixth position as they turn out into the Jim Clark S's for the final time. So Ian Jones and Matthew Parks will head down towards Barcroft and Sunny In and Sunny Out. 
and looked rather bemused to see Ben Huntley's car off the road as Ian Jones turns his way into the right-hander for the last time. Matthew Parks is doing everything he can to give chase. And Tom Griffiths isn't finished in his pursuit for thirds. They head out of Sunny out for the final time. And you have to say, Ian Jones, once he managed to get himself back past on the restart and had this race under control. And Matthew Parks will certainly take this result, I'm sure, for second place to rebolster his championship chances to move back up the table. And the fight for third heads to the last few corners. Wayne Flint may well just hold on for third place. Tom Griffiths will push him all the way to the lines. We head up towards the final corner for the last time and up towards the chequered flag. And it will be at third place of Wayne Flint by the looks of things. But the checkered flag flies for pole man Ian Jones, who flashes the headlights in celebration. And Ian Jones takes the victory in a breathless first race of the weekend for the Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup. It'll be second place for Matthew Parks and third place, possibly slightly bemused for Wayne Flint, thinking, how on earth did I get here? Fourth place goes to Tom Griffiths. Fifth will go to David Sharp. He'll enjoy that one. Sixth place goes to Rudy McMillan. Seventh place will go to Mark Skeet. Eighth to David May. And then it's Mikey Doble and Keith Towers who round out the top ten. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, was absolutely extraordinary. You can't say the Compact Cup doesn't give you entertainment because we had plenty of action overtaking championship contenders in drama, all sorts of position changes. I'm sure one very happy Ian Jones, who wins this race by 1.2 seconds from Matthew Parks in second. Wayne Flint takes the final podium place just ahead of Tom Griffiths in fourth. David Sharp rounds out the top five from Gordon McMillan in sixth, ahead of Mark Skeets in seventh. And David May, Mikey Doble and Keith Towers round out the top ten. Mike Doble picks up 11th place from Matt Flowers in 12th. Rhys Claydon in 13th place from Rudy McMillan in 14th by Ray McDowell to round out the top 15. Then John King, Oliver Faller, who does get to the flag in 17th place, but he will surely rue what could have been possibly a third place, his best result ever in the championship. Jim Barrett, Richard Sutherland, and rounding out the top 20 was, if I scroll down to my screen, it was Edmund. Then Morgan Adcock, Martin Gadsby, Craig Arcourt, John Attard, Simon Welch, James Stanbury. And then, uh, of course, we lost had Paul McCoy have the spin. Then, of course, we have Ben Huntley in 29th place. Brendan Murphy we also lost in the order as well. And then Thomas Middleton. And there's the crucial one. Stephen Daly non-finishing, which is an absolute shock. Wow, what a breathless race that was. And I'm sure Bryn, uh, Bryn, David, Bryn Lucas will find uh, three very exhausted drivers, very happy drivers, and what has been a thoroughly entertaining BMW Compact Cup race. Just before we hand down to Bryn, of course, to let you know that uh, next up will be a qualifying session for the all-important uh, event, which is TCR and Dunlop Touring Car Trophy. But down in the pit lane to have a chat to our top three is Bryn Lucas. It's just while we're uh, waiting to get the guys in position. Uh, as I said, it's qualifying for TCR UK and Dunlop Touring Car Trophy coming up very shortly. So we'll give you all the action from the goings on in that session. And of course, and after that, we move on into single seaters with the Avon Tires National Formula 4 Championship. Plenty of stars of the future here. One of the longest running single seater categories. And the cars trickle in after what was a very intense race. You can see all sorts of colors, fantastically prepared cars in the championship. And lots of action, to lots of talking points to go through, I'm sure, with the top three. So down with the top three now, it should be Bryn Lucas. He's got our winner and second and third place. Bryn, down to you. What a race that was. Quite a lot of drama as we were looking further back, particularly with Stephen Daly. We've got the race winner here. I'm going to grab a quick word with Ian Jones. Well done. Not dramatic at all. Back on it. Even when I got in front and got a slight gap, get pressure on. Uh, perfect race, bit of racing, bit of space, perfect. Yeah, it was one of these races that the heat certainly starts getting to you as the race goes on. Nicely for you though, these sprint races, they're nice and short, but you have to stay focused for the entire time. Watching the race there, you're probably unaware of it, but these cars, quite back-end heavy, aren't they? Or quite happy to, to kick out on you. Yeah, um, it's, it's where we're trying to push them so hard, they are road cars at the end of the day, um, yeah, Just good start to the day and hope yeah. it carries on. Now I saw you going over there to, to Matt to have a little word with him, you say he kept you honest, um, were there any moments that you thought you may have 
have lost this one. Ball the car in the lead. Um, he made a small mistake at Tower, I think, which gave me a run on him. Uh, otherwise, I think Matt would have had it. I would have been because he's had to make a wide car. Yeah, like the relationship, you guys. Is it quite a, a, a nice family? Yeah, it's a nice family. Um, depends if you take each other out, like I did at uh, a Snetterton by accident, but <laughs> he didn't return the favour, so that's one thing. <laughs> oh, I know. Good race win there. Well done. Thank you very much. Let's speak to the second place then, shall we? Let's go over to. If we speak to Matt then, so Matt, really, really nice race for you. There was no drama, nice and easy, and um, happy days. Oh, it's been long, uh, long overdue to the podium, to be honest. We had a bad start to the season with engines, problems, etc. Um, in Snetterton, we had it, we were back on it, but we had a few issues. But to be back here, racing great today with, with Ian, great respect, loads of space given, um, and the two overtakes were just sheer errors on each party. Looking at some of the cars, some of the drivers out there, they've said that the track is a bit green at the moment, should we say. There's, it's, it's not a lot underneath you, so you're having to feel your way around it. Yeah, there's, it's a lot of understeer, oversteer, especially on the brakes, because we're pushing the limits so hard. Um, you, you wouldn't be surprised to see quite a lot of lock-ups in the car, sort of trying to swap ends with you going into likes the sunny in. Um, but yeah, it's, it's okay, I think. It's quite a nice, nice track to drive with that surface. I think um, it allows the car to move around a bit, which is what I like anyway, So, and I think Ian's the same. Um, so I know I quite like it. A bit of silverware for your day as well. Well done. Yeah, thanks very much. Great stuff. Let's speak to third place then. This was a really, really hard fought third place for you. You had to climb up a number of places there, but you had to get your elbows out as well. A little bit. I had to fight to start the first couple of laps. And then when you settle down, I thought, well, I'm quite happy here. I'll take that. Let them fight it out in front. And uh, luckily enough, something went wrong. And I just picked it up, picked up the mess. That's it. And of course, then the, uh, the safety car comes out. Yeah. and you get bunched back up again and it's all to play for. I think I've got a good start because I think I must have caught Ben napping a little bit because he jumped a couple of cars back and I thought I'll settle back in again, which was quite good, I was a bit worried about that, but, and then battle on to keep my position really. For yourself, the rhythm is really important around here because the circuit being so green because we're early on in the race weekend, you've got to get that rhythm, you've got to get that flow. So when the safety car comes back out, you've got to build up again. Yeah, this is a track, for, I mean, I'm only a novice, I've done three years, but this is a track where the harder you push, the worse it gets, and you chase and chase, you've got to really settle down. I've only just learned that the last couple of laps, really, and then it starts coming to you. But apart from that, it's been good. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Absolutely, you've got some nice silverware, bronzeware for you, and you can look ahead for the next race. Thank you, cheers. Well done. There you go, it's the top three. Very nicely fought race. A lot of drama along the way. We expect to see a bit more of that later on as well. And coming up next, we have got the qualifying session for the TCT, the Dunlop Touring Car Trophy and TCR UK. Five cars of TCR UK battling out at the moment. Lewis Kent there, I spoke to him earlier on. He is looking very, very confident, as always, when it comes to qualifying. So we'll see you back here in just a few minutes for the qualifier for the Touring Car Trophy and the TCR UK.